Hello, my name is Joe Iwanaga. I'm a clinical anatomy research fellow at, here at Seattle Science Foundation. Um, today I'm going to talk about the maxillofacial anatomy research review in 2017. Um, we have done uh, probably 20 or 30 projects about the uh, maxillofacial anatomy and it's, it's a massive topic so oh. <laughs> So uh, I had to choose um, a couple of study for this presentation. So the first, I am going to talk about the trigeminal nerve, which is uh, number five cranial nerve, and we have uh, three different branches from the trigeminal nerve. Uh, the V1 is the ophthalmic nerve, V2 is a maxillary nerve, and V3 is a mandibular nerve. Okay, so the V1, the ophthalmic division comes up from the supraorbital, you know, foramen or notch, and the V2, infraorbital nerve, is comes up from the infraorbital foramen. Um, V3 comes up from the mental foramen. The the name the nerve is called the mental nerve. So this is a you know branch of the V2 infraorbital nerve. Infraorbital nerve has four different branches. The, the, the first one is the inferior papilla branch, which innervates the lower eyelid. The number two and three is going to the nodes, external nasal branch and the internal nasal branch. The number four is a superior labial branch, labial branch. <laughs> I told him, <laughs> labial, <laughs> so, okay. superior labial branch. So the arrows show the, the position of the infraorbital foramen. And these two are inferior papillary branch and the internal nasal branch. So inferior papillary branch innervates the lower eyelid and internal nasal branch innervates the nasal septum or some mucus of the nose. And so this, this is showing the, some anatomy of the infraorbital canal, which is a, you know, pathway of the infraorbital nerve. So this is a schematic drawing. So this uh, dotted line shows the infraorbital canal in the maxilla. So this is a foramen. So these are all branches of the infraorbital nerve. This red arrow indicates the infraorbital canal, just underneath the very thick bony wall of the maxilla its sinus. The right picture shows the coronal section of the CT image of the patient, and also red arrows show the infraorbital canal. So, you know, if you have some injury of the, you know, anterior wall of the maxillary sinus, it can make some injury to the infraorbital canal as well. It's very easy to be damaged. The bony wall is very thin. So if this infraorbital canal is damaged, you know, all the all the infraorbital nerve can be you know, damaged. So it makes some numbness of the cheek or numbness, maybe numbness of the nasal septum and the numbness of the upper lip. Yeah. So this little bit complicated. So A and B show the same cadaver. This is the dissection, the dissection picture. And this is a medial side, this is a lateral side, and this is a orbit. orbit. So this dotted line shows the infraorbital canal, and these yellow are infraorbital nerve. This is some of the part of the infra, infra, inferior papillary branch, superior labial, labial branch, and external or internal nasal branch. And we found that this small branch arising from the upper wall of the infraorbital canal, which has never been described before. So, you know, we had a, um, one of the branches, inferior papillary branch of the infraorbital nerve. So this nerve is also arising from the infraorbital nerve, but inside the canal. So we call the, we name this nerve uh, this nerve as a an posterior inferior papillary branch. And anterior one, well-known one, it's called the uh, anterior 
inferior Bieber branch. So we have removed the bony wall of the maxillary sinus, so we could see uh, inside the infraorbital canal in, in the right picture. Okay, so let's go to the internal nasal branch. This picture shows the, here is the infraorbital can, uh, foramen and the external and internal nasal branch. So this is the anterior lateral view of the, the infraorbital nerve. This picture shows the inferior view of the nose. So these two arrows show the, the course of the internal nasal branch, which is going to the nasal septum. Here is a midline. So this is another study. So this is a study for measurement of the internal nasal branch. So you know, internal nasal branch is well known, but the, there are very few study about the, you know, like a morphometric study of the internal nasal branch. So we did uh, some dissection of the, this internal nasal branch. And they measure the distance from the, uh, this, this, we put the point A and point B, and uh, we measure distance from the point A to the infraorbital nerve. And also we measure point B to infraorbital uh, internal nasal branch. So this distance is uh, distance h and distance v. So all the distance are almost uh, the mean, mean of the, the average of the distance are almost zero. 0 0.5, 0 0.8 millimeters at most 1.5 millimeters. So it means uh, you know running course of the internal nasal branch is just behind the you know, lateral counter of the ailer of the nose or bottom part of ailer. So if you cut this area for you know, skin incision of the, some surgery, we can easily damage the, this internal nasal branch. So let's go to the another study. So this is a study for more you know, peripheral part of the internal nasal branch. This internal nasal branch in the base uh, nasal septum, which I you know, mentioned before, and deep to this septum, we see this is the inferior, inferior view of the internal nasal branch. Here is a main trunk of the internal nasal branch and go anterior, and which supply the three different branches. So this is very hard to understand, so I'm gonna show you the schematic drawing. So this is the main trunk of the internal nasal branch and goes anterior and you know, gives rise to the three different branches. So anterior, inferior, septal branch, middle, and posterior. So all the specimen, I did uh, more than 10, 12, 14 sides of the specimen, but the, all, the, all the specimen had these branches. And the, this is a section picture. So this is also inferior view. So this yellow one is a internal nasal branch, which I mentioned. And this artery is you know, the pole mentioned before. This is a columella artery. So in all the specimen, I didn't measure, I didn't you know, record the, about the columella artery in this, in this study, but the, all the columella artery is running medial to the internal nasal branches. <clears throat> so um, I talked about the three different study. So the, the conclusion is the posterior inferior papilla branch, which we found, which has never been described, arises from the upper wall of the infraorbital canal. Internal nasal branch descends behind, just behind the lateral contour of the ala. And the internal nasal branch gives rise to three anterior and middle and posterior and inferior uh, septal branches. And these are all uh, published recently. So two of them are from a clinical anatomy journal, which is, you know, the Dr. Tavs is the editor in chief of this journal. And the, the other one is uh, published from the clinical journal. Journal of uh, Plastic Reconstructive and Anesthetic Surgery, so which is accepted just a couple of weeks ago. So this is a quite new study. So um, we have uh, you know another more more another maybe 20, 30 studies which I wanted to talk about, but we have no time. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you.